I think um, an interesting thing about getting started in the business um, was I was just working as an assistant, not even assistant, I was really just a gopher at a studio. Um, and I was about the sixth or seventh person on this totem pole. So like the chances of me getting to be on any of the cool sessions was really non-existent. And um, the studio owner knew this old producer, Jack Douglas, who actually wasn't that old at the time, but he had just worked on John Lennon's Double Fantasy and got the Grammy Award for that. And he was gonna come by and check out our studio. We had a vintage Neve 8038 console, an all studer tape machines, big old wooden room, it was a great rock and roll room. And he called, or his manager called at around 7.30 or 8 o'clock and said, oh, Jack's running late. Typical Jack, you know, just so um, he'll be there at some point at the night, though he's definitely heading out to his, his mom's house, was a couple towns away in, in West Orange, New Jersey. And so uh, everybody was just hanging out waiting for Jack. And uh, because I was the last person on the totem pole, I was just like, well, I'm going because there's no chance that I'm going to work with Jack Douglas, you know, because I'm the seventh gopher assistant here. So there's no way that I'm going to get the opportunity. So I'm out of here. Well, as it turned out, Jack never showed up that night. And he stayed at his mom's house. And then he was coming by the studio early in the morning. So he called the studio at like 8.30 in the morning because everybody had stayed until 2 or 3 in the morning the night before. Nobody was at the studio except me and the receptionist. And so the receptionist picked up the phone and it was Jack Douglas. And he said, hey, I was supposed to come by and see the studio last night. Do you mind if I come by and check it out? And she was just like, what do I do? And I was like, yeah, tell him to come by. So we quick, quickly hung up the phone with Jack. He was on his way. We called the studio owner who was about 30 minutes away. He said, don't let him leave. So, so Jack came by. He had a real quarter-inch tape. I put the quarter-inch tape up on the machine, played it for him in the control room, let him hear some things. He looked around uh, and was about ready to go. And I said, like, no, you can't go. You got to hang out and wait for Joey, the owner, to come by. And uh, I was like, want to go get breakfast? <laughs> and he was just like, okay. So we went out to breakfast, um, talked about a lot of stuff that I knew nothing about, brought him back to the studio and he and the studio owner just kind of uh, rambled on a bit about a potential project, and uh, uh, he came out of the office, said, Alan, thanks, and, I'll, and he would just walked out. We didn't hear from him for two or three months, and then uh, we get a phone call from Atlantic Records, and they're like, hi, we'd like to book studio time for Jack Douglas. Uh, we need three months lockout. Um, can we do that? And obviously, the studio owner was like, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, sure. And she says, oh, yeah, and by the way, make sure Alan's his assistant click. And so, so began my stint learning from one of the greatest rock and roll producers there was.